What is it you want, Barry? What do you want? You, you want the moon? Just say the word and I'll throw a lasso around it and pull it down. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, dying times here. Come with me if you want to live. That's it, man. Game over, man. Game over. The Force will be with you. Always. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to 20th Century Geek. I'm your regular host, Scott Weatherly, and uh, I'm on my own today. We are doing this quarter's uh, Patreon Choice 30 Minutes Thought. Uh, this is where the uh, the guys on the top tier of the uh, Patreon uh, feed, or well, Patreons, get to choose a topic that I will then talk about for 30 minutes. Now, we do this on a regular basis on the uh, Patreon, all my Patreons get an opportunity to hear this um, every month. Uh, most recently, we've actually done on extreme 90s comics. Um, and so the choice has been made. For the next 30 minutes, I will be talking about the horror author, uh, Sean Huston. Now, I will say, I keep calling Billy Houston. It's not. It's Sean Hudson. Hudson. H-U-T-S-O-N. British horror author. Uh, and we're going to talk about him because uh, well, it's just a choice they made. So Sean Hudson is a horror writer. Now what does he sort of fit in? And this is interesting because he's not a well-known author outside of the UK. He is a British author. Um, <clears throat> but if you if you can compare, if I can compare him to anything, if you've read or come across the book um, Paper Books from Hell by Grady Hendrix, um, he is that kind of thing. It's this, this is uh, late 70s, early 80s uh, explosion of the paperback horror novel which occurred and he uh, broke through um, off the back of that uh, also if you haven't um, read paperbacks from hell and you are interested in all this stuff you know uh, these authors Sean Hudson um, Richard Lehman Clive Barker uh, Guy N. Smith those kinds of people <clears throat> check it out I'll, I'll put a link down in the notes actually uh, paperbacks from hell fantastic book by Grady Hendrix Besides the point. Anyway, so Sean Hudson, he comes through and he breaks through with his first novel, um, The Skull. The, the, <clears throat> having read, I've read some of his books, I should say, we'll talk to his, about his style in a minute, but I haven't read The Skull. Um, before I understand of it, it's, it's what you would expect from an early uh, novel. It's fine, it's good, it sort of does its thing, um, but it's his next novel. Uh, 1982's uh, Slugs that uh, really took off. Now, it's a horror novel about slugs. Now, this this feeds into sort of the animal horror or the the um, the fear of nature kind of horror um, that was part of this explosion uh, of the horror novels. Now, Slugs is also made into a film uh, in the 80s uh, available through uh, Arrow Video in the UK. Uh, is it good? <clears throat> the book's not bad, actually. I will say this: it's 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 not it's not bad. Actually, the book's kind of fun, um, and um, it's probably it's not not nowhere near his best, but it's, it's it's a fun book. The film is a bit of a mess, in all honesty. Um, it's one of those where you sort of you know you, you when you use animals and they've got to look you know look. Uh, terrifying, you know, the, the horror is in the animal, and then you go, Oh, it's just a slug. <laughs> so they actually have like little plastic slugs or sort of like you know, latex slugs, and they've got mouths like they have teeth, and it, it looks weird. Um, it's not terrible if you like sort of like schlocky 80s horror, but it's not good, it's, it's definitely not good. It's not something I'd recommend. Um, go spend a lot of money on, <clears throat> but the point is, sort of like this explosion, I mean, uh, is that he sort of rode the back of, uh, particularly sort of focused on, oh, not quite splatter um, horror, that was part of it, but there's very much this sort of like lurid, um, grotesque, gory kind of horror, um, done in an almost pulpy way. I mean, the second one, Spawn, I believe it's the next one, yeah, 1983. Um is about let me just check actually because there's another one I've got them in front of me relics no yeah it is 
you know, Nemesis as well, which was good. Sp- Spawn, yeah, Spawn is about the undead, undead, undead zombie children coming back to take revenge. I believe that's right. Um, and so that gives you a bit of an insight into the kind of things that this this is sort of like proper um, splatter, uh, gory kind of things. Very pulpy, very pulpy, uh, but enjoyable with it. Like you know, one of the things that's interesting about him though is. He, the characters he introduces, um, how to describe it? It's not that they're all unlikable, but they're clearly not supposed. You know, they're not always supposed to be likable. Like this isn't your. Uh, this is and this is a British thing. I feel this is actually a very British trait. We'll go through some other authors that I'd compare him to. Um, we are often fond of um, just. Forcing you to follow as a, as a reader, so the authors will force the reader to follow a character that's probably sort of morally ambiguous, or um, you know, po- you, a character you sort of you know you're not entirely sure you want to win, but because they have been made the protagonist, you sort of go, well, I've, I've, I've got a back on that's what the book's about, um, and he does it on several occasions. I mean, I'm, I'm currently reading Assassin, um, 1988, <clears throat> and I'm not going to spoil anything, but. It's about gang warfare in eighties London, and so the the main protagonist is is a gangster, uh, for, like for for this this gangster, uh, gang, I suppose, a uh, driver for the gang. So and he's not like a good guy. Like it's clear he's done sort of shady deals. He's not you know he's not too worried about beating someone up or killing someone or whatever. Um, but they try and give him this. It's that sort of um, you know, you know this is a phrase I'm probably going to regret. You have these characters, these female characters, uh, tart with a heart. Okay, sort of like it's and it's, there's a character in this I would describe as in Assassin I would describe as tart with a heart, and it's this idea of sort of like you know someone who's probably a bit of a dolly bird or a a bit thick or a bit of a blonde, you know, but she's got got a heart of gold, like you know she sort of you know she's good and she's sort of in, you know, um, for the male equivalent I would say it's sort of like thug with a heart, you know, like they they're going to be rough and ready and they're probably going to. do bad things and stuff but they're possibly doing it for the right reasons or they, they actually legitimately have a heart at the end of the day um you know that's the sort of some of these characters that come through and they're not always um it, this is the problem like, well, we'll get to my opinion about it, but that's the kind of character he has he does it on several occasions um to, to varying degrees of success now the, the thing is with sean hudson um he had a type for a long, long time, and then sort of shifted, sort of in the nineties when he sort of knew things were over. He sort of, he did more lent into some supernatural thrillers and some other bits and pieces, and they're sort of fine. Now he he, he did do others. He's done quite a lot of books. He's written a lot. He's been written right up to twenty nineteen. But he, it's clear that for to the nineties, he sort of moves away a little bit from um, this lurid sort of. Um, gory thing now he returns to it again at times he has done but it's really there's like a block i'd say from, from the skull well no beyond that i'd probably say spawn slugs is is this sort of it feels a bit of a cash in a cheap sort of try but from spawn in 1983 through to nemesis in 1989 <clears throat> that's this block that i consider to be the sort of sean hudson um paperbacks from hell sort of block you know this is a block of well, i'll just go through them so there's like spawn 1983 erebus 1984 uh, shadows 1985 Ble- uh, breeding ground 85 relics um death day victims assassin which is 88 and then nemesis 1989 so that this block if you could get those in a row then you'd be you know you would see sort of like this there's a, there's a type going on in this uh i mean nemesis again i believe it's, it's sort of like a a child being reborn, and I'm, I'm sure it's the fetus of Hitler. Um, I have read that a long time ago. And when I say a long time ago, these are the kind of books that I picked up uh, when I was in my teens, early teens. They're sort of like they've got some great covers. And I will say, Assassin in particular, the original uh, cover for Assassin, or the paper book edition of Assassin I had in the 80s, uh, or it would be the 90s actually when I had it, had this sort of like the hand holding a gun, like this this hand uh, decaying. Um, rotting flesh rodden hand holding this, this short snub revolver 
much like if you've ever seen the films House, House 1, 2, 3, and 4, but House in particular, that they've got that rotting hand ringing the doorbell. Just the same. Like It's a, such a good cover. I'm all black, apart from this rotting hand. <clears throat> and Spawn and, and, and Nemesis, I remember sort of having these like weird twisted fetuses looking out at you and a few others. And there's some really good ones. Erebus is a good one. Like this figure coming lurching out of the dark. So this selection of like black covers, gold inlay um, title on the front, and then these covers of just these sort of stark images on this black. And they were great. They really are. I, mean, I think of them now, actually, they really are good. And so they, they sort of lent into that sort of... Um, teen you know like pubescent sort of uh need for thrill and all that kind of thing the gore's there and the other thing is let's be clear the sex is there as well like there's some um i was gonna say well described sex scenes i probably wouldn't go that far in all honesty there are sex scenes in these books and if it's basically sort of you you get to a portion in some of these books where <clears throat> they, they overlap <laughs> so there's some odd odd things i remember that i think nemesis opens with a rape quite possibly i may be wrong but i, ha I have that seems to be in my head or at least a sex scene um and so there's this, there is this sort of thing of sort of sexual violence in these books as well so they are of their time i warn you now if you ever go back they are very much of their time and, and this isn't just sean hudson i'm going to defend that this isn't just him like he isn't you know he isn't just being a cock or anything but even in, in again going back to Assassin, there's there's a sort of a pretty much a rape scene in that, and it's sort of you know if you go oh you know she was this, but then it's the fact it's sort of like you know her pert nipples brushed against his chest, and you're like oh no that's not really how this should go, or you know um, there's one you know characters getting like clearly getting turned on by violence and this sort of thing like trying to tell you the kind of people they are that's a characteristic that's a trope. In fact, I would say that of his female villains or his female. Uh, you know antagonists or so whatever there are this thing of like you know um they would acknowledge the wetness between their thighs as they committed this horrendous act of violence you know or something or witnessed it or whatever that comes up i've I recognize that coming up a few times as well <clears throat> and so it's this sort of um to this sort of like you know these things you feel like you shouldn't be reading these things these are supposed to be sort of like oh this should be a banned book you know no no books should ever be banned but like they feel like it should be video if they, if you've had video nasties these are like booky nasties you know um that's what these go alongside they're this sort of eight this eighties love of horror and the eighties was a fantastic decade of horror and we obviously talk about all the movies but the the paperbacks are the same you know and and. Sean Hudson coming through at the same time as some of these other British writers. Um, in particular, one person I would then sort of put next to him is James Herbert. Now, James Herbert's one of my favourite authors of all time. Uh, love his books. Absolutely love his books. Now, his books start off in a similar vein. He starts with The Rats in 78, I think. Again, leaning into that um, animal terror kind of thing and then goes through the things so you get the environmental thing um with uh, the fog and he had the same thing like you know if, if you ever read like james herbert ha has certain types of antagonists as well like he tried to go for the sort of like working class not overly macho but like almost like you'd either have, you'd either have a, um, a working class honest intellectual teacher something like that or they'd be a bit more rough and ready um, or a drunk scruff bag, a bit like the the uh, Ash characters uh, from uh, Haunted and, and Goes to Sleep and so on. Um, but then whenever he whenever he introduces sex, it's the same thing. It's this really awkward, um, you know. D uh, once there's a book called Once, which is it sort of has this this this, this notion of st uh, fairy tales and how the fairies are sort of like part of our world. And there's this little nymph character in that, and she's described um, pleasuring herself. And you listen to it. Firstly, I, I've read the book, but I've also got the audio book. And you listen to the audio book, and instantly you're a bit like, firstly, the, the reader, you know, uh, reading this book is clearly sort of not entirely comfortable reading this. More so, I'm walking my dog, and this is not, you know, doing anything for me. It's, it's bizarre. It's not greatly well written. However, the horror and stuff are always very good. It's the same with Sean, uh, Sean Hudson. Like the horror is usually good. There's enough gore and there's enough sort of like suspense and and thrill that you the horror's good. And if but the thing is, as you get older, I suppose you sort of look at the sex scenes and you go, yeah, <laughs> they're a bit shit. Um, but 
when you're a kid, when you're a teenager, that sort of it's it's uh, forbidden. You know, it's uh, a taboo to be reading these, and so it has that extra sort of um, element of thrill. So I can't deny that they probably worked for me when I was a kid. Um, I must say, kid, I mean a teenager. So it leads it leads into that. The other thing I should highlight just quickly is um, it, the, the, he he's done something else. Sean Hudson has done a couple of things as well that I am uh, a big fan of. He did a couple of novelizations. Now the first one he did was the UK novelization of The Terminator. Now if I'm right. And I have to figure... I'm, I am just going to check this. I do believe there are two versions of the Terminator novelization. He wrote one. And then it was rewritten um, for the release of Terminator 2 um, by somebody else. Um, and I'm probably sort of scrolling and, and, you know... It's probably a complete waste of time. Um, but, yeah. So... And I believe that's true. So he wrote that. He also wrote... Then came back and did... Um, se- several horror, um, Hammer horror novelizations uh, in the in the sort of early twenty teens, and there's some of these. One of these actually I really want to pick up. We did Twins of Evil, X the Unknown, which we've covered on. Um, we may have covered actually X the Unknown. I'm not sure if we did read it, but <clears throat> we've definitely talked about it on on stories at time of space and the Revenge of Frankenstein, which is actually a really good film. Um. So he's obviously, you know, he's done these novelizations. So he and he actually wrote another book. He wrote a a, a non-fiction book, and I can't find it now. Which is basically um, a quiz book on horror movies, and it's actually kind of cool. He's got some good stuff in it. I had that. It's one of those ones I actually had. I didn't realize it was him until I was doing this, and I was like, "Oh Christ, I remember that book. I had that book." So that's kind of cool. Um, <clears throat> so. So yeah, Sean Hudson. Now I wanted to sort of get into this idea of a rev- let's go into a review because I think about these other authors, uh, and I've compared him to uh, James Herbert. Uh, I'd also, as I suggested, sort of like uh, Guy N. Smith um, being another uh, Guy N. Smith, probably a good comparison piece. Um, Guy N. Smith made the crabs, uh, the sucking pit, the the Sabbat um, books, and <clears throat> that idea of the lurid, that real sort of like pushing what you can get away with. Sabat is actually a really good example. The Sabat books are actually a really good example of this idea of having an antagonist or a protagonist, I apologize, or a protagonist, but yet you're never entirely sure if you're supposed to like them or not. Like, Guy and Smith Sabat is, is not quite, so he's like a supernatural detective, but not quite supernatural himself. Like, he does, you know. But he's like a supernatural James Bond kind of thing. Is what they're going for a little bit, possibly. Is that a good comparison? Yeah. Um, but he's still a dick. <laughs> like you know, he's overly macho. Um, I think in one of the books, like he, you know, he he not quite rapes, but sort of like you know, forces a woman into having sex with him and all this other stuff. Like it's it's really uncomfortable stuff. But of the day, you'd have read it and been like, oh, he's a proper sort of like seventies macho kind of guy and that went off into the 80s even if you read like the sucking pit like it's not um terrible the sucking pit's actually one of my favorite guy in smith so it, again it's that thing of like he's not terrible but it has this pulpy feel to it um and again i could compare it to those sort of video nasties uh you know like those italian horror sort of things that you have the the 70s and the 80s that thing of like you go ah oh, yeah it's not great but it's gory as hell. Like, you know, this is renowned for that sort of scene where someone's eyes gouged out or you see someone's head get sho- shoved onto a spike and all this other stuff. Like, there's, there's those elements in this where you'll sort of say, it's never great literature. Like, this isn't going to win, this isn't gonna win a, a literary prize. And you probably would struggle to sit there and sort of uh, <clears throat> analyse and deconstruct those novels on a thematic or you know wider literary um stage but but they're not there for that that's not the point you know they're not there to be sort of reviewed in that capacity they're there to be enjoyed they're there to be sat under a sheet at sort of like 11 o'clock at night with a torch as you read these books you know or feel sort of a little dirty reading them on the bus i don't know 
that's sort of the point and it's so it's what i like and it's why i've sort of pulled in on this block in particular <clears throat> is because it's this sort of era of uh fuck it we're gonna do this like all out you know i'm gonna try and offend i'm i'm gonna do this i'm gonna do that and I, i'm always quite impressed when they do that um to a point like there's some that don't work uh, and are just playing bad and again, I think of sort of like Richard Lehman. And Richard Lehman's one of those for me that has that um, the same effect and the same intent as uh, Sean Hudson. So if you if you've read Richard Lehman, who's I believe American, <clears throat> and you've enjoyed him, like check out Sean Hudson. Some of those early Sean Hudson, you will love them. If you if you enjoyed like Beware, or um, there's one called The Night Bus, and um, the Beast, what's the, the one, The Cellar, The Cellar, this is called The Cellar, if you enjoyed those, like, Sean Hudson is right up your street, like, those guys, um, go hand in hand, in, in those early days, um, and, and that's what it's called, that's, that's the point, like, those books are supposed to be lurid and pulpy and fun, um, in that same way, but they also open the doors, and this is what's quite, um, I would say, interesting, if I am going to try and sort of intellectualise some of this, People like Sean Hudson are important. So you read their books and you can say they're throwaway, uh, <clears throat> pulpy fun, right? But they also, weirdly, they educated, the, the actual sort of genre it's that themselves educated uh, an audience at that time. Like they elevated, we, we moved from something before to this next thing. And they are part of that transition. And they educated um, readers, of, the, of a certain age, and you will find this if you go into horror communities and you check certain uh, age groups and stuff, you will find there's this transitional group, these eight, uh, late 70s and early 80s, this transitional group of people that were then able to enjoy and understand when this stuff evolved. So, when sort of like James Herbert and um, even Sean Hudson evolved a bit more, like you, they could still enjoy those novels, um, <clears throat> and they were really more than just Stephen King in the 80s. But the thing is. These guys like Sean Hudson and, and uh, Richard Lehman or James Herbert, they paved a way that allowed, for more in, for more intense purposes, like Clive Barker's Books of Blood, um, which is like 80, first one to 86, I think. Because um, those are very lurid. Like they are more <laughs> fantastical and probably more literary uh, in many cases. But there were public publishers wouldn't if you if you hadn't had Hudson and and these other guys before like no publisher would have touched the books of blood. I'm telling you that now like that's the you know the, you may get a small printing of it, but it was too much. Like you read some of those books of blood, um, and they are fantastic. There's some real sort of like weird stuff in there. Like you know, um, I can't remember. I can't get them down now at the moment, but. You get some really cool stuff, but the, you know, but without without that, then you don't get um, Hellbound Heart, which is another sort of a similar one. Um, probably not as graphic, really, but still, you get the same sort of intent. So you don't get Hellraiser, um, and so you don't get Candyman, and so you know, you you sort of um, you miss this entire growth of horror, uh, especially in literary form. Um, and I think really as well, this this sort of explosion of paperbacks, and this is a wider point as well though, went both ways. Because what you end up getting is people that grew up and read books, you know, sort of in the 70s and, and sort of pick, carried on picking these up, probably a bit repulsed by them and moved on. But then there are kids that pick these up and then obviously have still, you know, maintained this love. Um, and so carry on reading these books. And so you get... Um, this continuation of these kinds of lurid sort of graphic horror sort of thing. You don't get so much anymore. You, you struggle to find them now, I think, nowadays. These kind of authors that do it that today. This kind of stuff. They're still out there, but not as many. Um, but the other way around as well. You would have had kids like me. Now, this is... I'm 40 now. I'm 40 this year. So I was born in, 80, born in late 81. <clears throat> so I came across this. In the 80s, late 80s, early 90s, I started by reading Point Horror. Okay, and Point Horror was a series of books designed for, for young adults. It was horror novels for young adults. And they're actually really good. There's some really good ones in there. I, mean, I probably couldn't read them now, but they were really good at the time. But you get to a point, and this happens with a lot of things, where you just go, this isn't flicking my switch anymore. 
what's the next thing? And I, I you know, you try Stephen. You know, you 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 try the big names: Stephen King, Dean Koontz, and you know, probably Anne Rice at this point in the nineties. Like, you know, that's another one that would have jumped up at that point. Oh, I'm going to try those for horror. And there would have been people that have been satisfied by those, but then there'd also be people that go. This the cover of this one Spawn looks good or Nemesis or whatever, which is what happened to me. And you pick these up and you go, this this book is an absolute fucking doozy. I'm in, and expand your expand your horror. So really, you know, Sean Hudson is um, probably a lesser known horror author. I don't know how many people listen to this have actually heard of Sean Hudson. I don't know many people listen to this. Um, but if you if you like horror fiction, like you like that sort of you know, if you want to push your bounds and like be ready, if you're going to read this, be ready to be offended, um, and and let it skate over you because it's not you know it's designed to sort of probably pull pull and push your buttons a little bit. Um, I will tell you what, so I'm going to think something. I'll just as a final note, but we'll go, go check him out. Anyway, but go check out Sean, Sean Hudson. If you like Richard Layman or Guy uh, Guy and Smith or even early James Herbert, go and check. Um, find yourself from Sean Hudson some of those early books from Sean Hudson um, what I would say though if anyone's ever watched Garth Marenghi <laughs> um, Garth Marenghi's Dark Place um, and some of the sort of like you know um, over sort of articulated dialogue and stuff that you get in that like, uh, Garth Marenghi is, is fitting into the is a, is a satire of these authors uh, Hudson, Guy and Smith, and that sort of thing. Like that's what he's supposed to be, and some of those that dialogue um, that he spouts, especially in the first episode where he sort of talks about the books he's written, is is prime um, <laughs> Sean Hudson uh, in the best possible way. Um, but it's, it's well worth checking out, and I do recommend it. Anyway, there we go. Thirty minute thoughts uh, on the author Sean Hudson. Go check them out. There'll be a link down below, especially as I say, for paperbacks from hell. And I will be tweeting out some of the book covers for uh, Sean Hudson. Uh, but anyway, ladies and gentlemen, if you like this, this is 30 Minutes Thoughts. Conversation. Come on, have a chat. Uh, this is what we do on the Patreon. We have one of these every month. And I just give my thoughts. Usually, you know, either informed or sometimes just off the cuff to see mm-hmm. what my thoughts are as I grow through a subject. Um, but this is, what we, this is what we do. So please, check out the Patreon. Uh, and if you like the podcast, it really helps. We've got three tiers, and uh, the lowest tier, you are still getting... Um, let me just check, actually. Let me just check. I've got my list right here. <coughs> so at the first level, fan, um, you get uh, the 30-Minute Thoughts podcast. You get the Twilight Zone, Trekking Through the Twilight Zone podcast that I do with Julian Darris. That's a weekly podcast, um, and that is only £5 a month. And on top of that, you get all kinds of other bits and pieces that I drop on there every now and then. Uh, it, the next level, which is uh, seven pounds, I think, <coughs> is yeah, 30, thirty minute thoughts. The Twilight Zone, trekking through the Twilight Zone, create a corner, uh, which is every quarter of the, of the year, I bring on a creator and talk to them about what they're doing. We've had all kinds of people on there. Uh, Karen, Kieran Gillian, um, not Kieran, not Karen Gillian, Kieran Gillen, the writer. Um, so Sarah Summers, Sarah Summers, uh, the voice of Janine from the Real Ghostbusters, and last month I snuck in a sneaky, sneaky one. Uh, I actually put in my interview with uh, Bill Sinkovich, uh, so that's on there as well. Uh, you also get to, to contribute to the poll for Thirty Minute Thoughts, and at the top level you also get to choose the content as well as all the other stuff you go uh, went previous. You get to choose the sub subject for this episode once a quarter. Uh, and there's all kinds of fun so please go check out there's a link down below anyway ladies and gentlemen uh, we've come to the end of our quarter this is it this is the end of the uh, second quarter of the year we've done two cycles and we're about to go into the next cycle of episodes so the next uh, episode is um, story time sit back relax we're going to talk about story so between now and the next episode go and track down uh, Thomas Legati and his short story The Frolic it's available online, but go check it out. We'll be tweeting about it before then. But but uh, between now and then, go give it a read. It's very short. Uh, and ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for listening. And we'll talk again soon. Mm-hmm.